right, let's see how many Swifties are parked in this truck stop today. Okay. One. I think from the freeway, this guy is a, oh yeah, he's an owner operator. It's a new one too, it's a 93. Okay, so that's one. Here. I'll tell you why I'm doing this in just a minute. <laughs> Cover him. Ah, there you go. Well, I'm surprised. Usually there's more than just two Swift trucks parked in here. There's usually a whole slew of them uh, parked in this is just a little travel plaza, BP station, uh, off of 52, uh, kind of halfway between Minnesota, uh, Minnesota, halfway between. Oh, no. Nope. There's a three right there. Sorry, I was a little fast about that. Swift. Uh, it's a travel plaza, a little truck stop, halfway between uh, St. Paul and Red Wing, Minnesota. Uh, so we're kind of in the, heading towards the southern half of Minnesota, uh, kind of towards Wisconsin, but not really kind of parallel. Uh, so anyway, this is just a little truck stop, and I'm going to park uh, in the back here, so I'm out of the way of everybody. But like I said, usually there's like three times as many Swift trucks as that. I've seen up to, oh, here's another one. Guy's cleaning his mirrors right here. Another company truck, it looks like it. Yep. Alright. Hey, Helverlines! I tried to get a job with them. And I know a couple people that work for them. Good company. So, anyways, I'm gonna park over here by this tanker. And I'm gonna explain to you why it's so ironic. Okay. I'm gonna try to keep this steady. Uh, I'm gonna get the tripod ready in a few minutes here and we'll actually drive down there with the tripod. but. See that Swift truck right there? He's in the terminal. That's the Swift terminal over there. Okay? It's the other Swift trucks. I'm trying to keep this as steady as possible. And that big building with a blue roof, that's the terminal uh, that's back there. And there's a truck stop behind me. Now the distance in this camera is pretty accurate. And I'm actually going to drive down there to show you how short it is. But uh, I, I always, always found it interesting when I, I did work for this terminal for a while. I don't work for them anymore. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into it, but uh, if you're going to work for Swift, just be careful. Um, I've got nothing against them, and I don't think it's the company. I think that the part of the problem is is that there's just so many uh, terminals they have that you know all the terminals are kind of like their own individual company. And this one here in Minnesota uh, had a big changeover when I was working there. A lot of people got laid off, and the people they brought in were not very good. Uh, I had an amazing mentor, his name is Scott Miner, if you're watching this, Scott, hi, sorry I haven't called you. Uh, great guy, uh, but just the way they treated me after I worked there, or after I went through my training, uh, I didn't appreciate it. Long story short, I'm not really going to get into it. Wow, my teeth are really white, holy cow, that's just the sun, whitener. And, um, but, anyways, I'm in this truck stop, and I'm going to do a drive-by, and I'll probably actually put video over this when I do that, but it's like less than a block away. I mean, I, it's like a 10 minute walk if I walked over there, pretty much. Just saying, well, just saying, well, what's the big deal? Why are they parking here? Well, I've always wondered that. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll come in to be six trucks parked from Swift. And in fact, um, you know, because the terminal's right there, one time, uh, one of the terminal managers that worked here a long time ago came down here and saw six of the trucks, looked up the information and realized that all six trucks were carrying what is called a secured load. Uh, that could be anything, that could be alcohol to DVDs from Walmart and need to be parked in as, as secure as possible. Now when you're far away from it, from the terminal, obviously you have to park in a truck stop or wherever you can park. Um, but when you're a block away, the hell got fired. Well, I found out it's from my mentor and I'm, I'm agreeing is that Everybody, everybody has kind of an idea about you have to log as a truck driver. You know, you've got a log book. You can work so many hours. Everybody, I think, has a rough idea. If you don't, now you do. Um, well, when Swift, we do fueling and all that kind of stuff. We did that with Swift. That was logged. So if they fueled up here, they logged. But when you enter and exit a truck stop, you don't have to log that. What I mean by that is that the terminal to go in, you don't have to check in. They don't care if anybody comes in. It's leaving that they care about and every time you leave it gets logged into the computer you don't have to log leaving leaving swift terminal but you have to you go to the gate uh my driver code was two eight zero nine five something 
you know, and then you give, so you say that, and then you give the truck number, which, uh, which you know, whichever truck you're driving, and they say, okay, good, have a, have a good day, and it goes up. But what they've done is they've logged in that you are the driver of that truck and that you left on that time period. And where that comes into play is that if you get busted for log violations or you get pulled over, you get into an accident, the DOT can work with Swift to figure out when you left. So they have an idea of when you left, and so you can't colorfully cheat, as it's called, um, and dock to your logbooks as much because you're leaving at a set time. See, if we, if, uh, let's say I was a truck driver for Swift and I was, you know, that guy washing his mirrors or something like that. I'm not saying that that's what he's doing, but I'm saying that's why a lot of times they park here, um, is that here they don't have to log it out. So the DOT has no idea if they even spent any time here. They don't. They just log it as we drove right through, or we spent 10 hours here, or I'm at mile marker 25, which is, you know, six miles that way instead of right here. And so, uh, they do it to cheat a lot of times. I'm not saying that Swift is the only company that does it, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, or drivers that do it, you know, and it doesn't reflect the company, it reflects the drivers. And the problem with this industry is that you're asking people to work, you know, 70, 80 hours of unpaid work sometimes a week and to be away from their homes. And, you know, what kind of people are you going to get? You can get good people, good drivers, and you can get horrible drivers too. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, I'm going to do a quick drive-by of, of the terminal and just kind of show you from... I'm just going to set up the tripod really quick in here because I tried to do the tripod and it... I'm probably going to put that footage in there too, but it chuck itself right off the dashboard and then somehow it got thrown from the dashboard uh, to my passenger seat in anger. I, I don't know who did that. Interstate. Cool. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go do that just to kind of show you because distances and cameras can kind of be interesting sometimes but literally it's not a very long drive i'll go i'll go from the truck stop and i'll turn around and then uh we're gonna continue on to i think i'm gonna head down to red wing and see if anybody's hiring down there today so anyways cool <laughs> that truck's name was omo i thought it said homo oh como okay como loops and supplies homo lube and supplies that'd be interesting it's like homo well that must be really embarrassing driving that truck around